Okay. All right. So I am just going to, um, this is another one of those quick 30 minute trainings. Um, and this one is going to be focusing on how to see what your um, breakdown is when you have a transaction, um, how close you are to capping, as well as all of the documents that are required for compliance. So this will help you get uh, paid faster and also help you understand more of the breakout of the check. So what we're gonna do first is start with a transaction where you're going to open up this commission tab and that commission tab will break down what your check will look like from the office so you already know in advance before you even get paid what your check is going to be so there are a few steps that you have to do before this um, number one you would have an opportunity already created so um, this is my opportunity that's created um, i'm just pretending like it's my husband buying a house and I just entered all the information that I wanted to in here as I, when I created the opportunity. But now I am going to um, move on as if he has made an offer on the house. So I'm gonna click this offers tab. Now this offers tab is super helpful, especially if you have multiple offers. And the reason why is because this is going to, um, if you have multiple offers, you can enter them all in and basically to present to your client one sheet that shows all the different offers so you're not having to move papers all over the table and everything like that. So um, to create this commissions tab, to unlock this commissions tab, um, you have to put an offer in. So we're going to add an offer. So this is the initial offer. And we're just gonna answer some of these questions. So this is the, we'll just call this the initial offer. Offer date is today. Um, let's say we want to close, have a 30 day closing, and the address um, will just, oops, hold on. Let me see if I can just find an address on there. Choose my current address. Um, no. we are, we're in a new neighborhood, so I don't even know if our address even exists. Yet, so I'm just going to put our address in here. All right, that. All right, we're going to keep going. All right, those who are just joining us, welcome. I am going through how to open up this commissions tab and basically what this commissions tab does is uh, show you a breakdown of your check um, before you even get it. So right now, um, to, first of all, to get this to unlock, you have to put in an offer. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's just going through the offer real fast. Um, so I am, let's see, can we bought the house to be over. So I'm just filling in this information. Associate name, representative, her name is Lisa. I'm not going to put her email or anything. And that, the, that would be your email address if you were filling this out. And then you can put if they're pre-qualified, pre-approved, whatnot, any information that you want in there. All right, the terms. Um, let's say we're going to put 75 down um, and we're going to finance um, do, how much is our house in front of it? We'll do 200 finance or something like that. Um, we're going to put down how much earnest money that you um, want into option fees, termination options. Uh, if you want the seller to contribute anything, uh, you can put that there. And then you can go through the, the agent analysis. And this is where you can put your um, information in there, what your the pros are of this contract, the cons of this offer and then a summary, and then hit save. So like I said, if you are receiving these offers, you can put all these offers, multiple offers in here and look at them side by side so that you can really see what is going on. So um, we're going to accept this offer. We're gonna say that this offer got accepted. And as you can see right here, this little commissions button is now active. So we're gonna hit that. And we are going to fill in some information. So it has the sales price, the commission rate's already in there, 
because uh, I filled that out in the details, the total commission, and then we picked the close date. So we need to edit a few things. So we're going to click this contract date as of today. It saves. So it's going to kind of tell you if you're missing any information. Also, if your percent is not 3%, if you end up going lower or your commission um, is different for some whatever reason, you can go in and change it there. So as you can see down here, this is a breakdown. So this is what my check will look like, okay? So it has um, the gross, the 6% agent royalty, and then the 30% company dollar. So those are those right there. Minus all of that, if I wanted to give the kid to care, I can do that here just by hitting this agent pay button. I can go in and donate $5. And um, there's any concessions or referrals or anything, I can go in and do that there. Hit save and it is going to show me what my check is going to be, okay? Um, the other thing it shows me is if I had actually been submitting these different commissions and as I got paid, this will change. So it would be 3,000 minus whatever I paid in and then it'll show me like a little percent. So if you're ever curious how much um, you have paid in or anything, you can actually go to the commissions tab when you create um, one of these and see in real time what it is. So you can kind of keep up with it. And then you just hit submit and it sends it off to me, okay? Is there any questions before I move on to the compliance part of this um, about the commissions tab? Going once, going twice. All right, we're gonna move on to the compliance. All right, so I'm gonna switch my view real fast to what um, I see so I can show you guys what this looks like real fast. So this is what um, I get. So this was my commission submission review. So I just go in and I look at it and then I hit approve and, action, and I can actually upload that um, into my software. So that's what that back part looks like. You guys don't have to worry about that part, but I just wanted you to see that. All right. All right, so let's move on to the document. So I'm gonna look at a listing first. The listing versus the buyer will depend on what documents that you need. So a listing should be submitted, all the listing documents should be submitted to our office by at least 48 to 72 hours once your home goes under coming soon or goes active. And that is just to make sure that everyone is, paperwork is good, um, that your MLS looks good, and that way um, you don't get um, randomly audited by MLS and something's going on. So that is the reason for the timeline. Just to go over this, I am in the documents tab under a listing. So you can flip through here based off the stage that you're in. So if you have just listed something, you would be in this open um, area right here. Your full agent report, once it goes active, would go here. And again, that is just to make sure that everything that you have put in the MLS is correct and there's nothing in there that can get you uh, fined for any reason. The RECAD is always required for a listing, a buyer, a transaction broker, a broker agreement, whatever. The RECAD is always required. And then you have your listing agreement that will go here. The estimated closing statement will go here. The dual agency agreement will go here. We like for you to go ahead and get these, especially for listings, because that is one less document you have to go back and ask for if Keller Williams is on the other side. And you have to have this document, whether KW Madison is on the other side, KW Huntsville is on the other side, it doesn't matter what KW it is, you have to have that if another KW agent is on the other side. So just go ahead and get it from your, list, from your seller. It's just one little bitty document they have to sign. Um, and then the affiliated business agreement with Capital Title, uh, we are affiliated with them. So that is just an FYI to your client that if they do choose to go with them uh, to do the closing, that we actually benefit from that as a business. Uh, and that's just an FYI for them. 
these things right here are all required unless there are conditions. So if you have a coming soon, then we need the coming soon addendum. And then if anything changes throughout your active listing, you would update with the listing change notice here, or if it is was built before 1978, the lead-based paint form would go there. If there are any other documents that you need to put in here, if you need to update even, um, maybe put an additional listing change notice in there, all you have to do is hit add item and fill this out and upload it. All right. You move on to the under contract. We should have your contract docs within 48 hours of it going under contract. And again, that is just to make sure that all your paperwork looks good. So you would upload the uh, full agent report out of MLS that it shows that your listing is contingent or pending. You would upload the sales contract. The copy of earnest money, you should um, have that fire agent send you a picture of it or something so that you can put this in your file. It's very important to have, especially when closing day comes and not sure what's going on with the earnest money. Inspection addendum will go here. And then that's really all that's required unless there's a counter offer, there's an addendum. This is a big one. Um, if your listing goes higher or even lower than the original list price, we need a new estimated closing statement. And even throughout the transaction, if that price changes within $5,000, we will ask for a new estimated closing statement. You should always, no matter what, but when the price changes, get your client a new estimated closing statement. Um, that is a state requirement, but we only are really going to look for it in our files if it's pretty drastic. So we look at around $5,000 difference. If you have a referral, you'll put your referral agreement here and the W-9 of the referral company. And then if you have requests for repairs, you can upload it there, the FHA, VA addendum, and then if you have a mutual release, you can put it there. And again, if you have other documents, just hit add item, and then you can upload it if there's multiple addendums, stuff like that. Finally, when it closes, um, you, of course, you'll definitely turn your, your closing in within 48 hours. So you'll upload the closing disclosure and settlement statement there. The final walkthrough is required unless it's land because there's no final walkthrough for land. And then a copy of the check from the attorney. The closed DA documents down here, that is actually where we will load the copy of your check and a breakdown of the information that we have. So you will not use this, but um, eventually we will put something in there for your records. If you want to put any other Keep up with any other things in here. You can make custom folders. Um, and also, if, say, your listing goes um, under contract and then gets released, instead of creating, creating an entire new uh, listing opportunity, you can actually go over here to under contract, hit this little arrow, and hit add a version, and then um, actually create a new version. All these will be empty, and then you can even switch back and forth if you need to between your files. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. Any questions about the listing side of compliance? All right, we are going to move on to the buyer side. Okay. The buyer folders will look, um, the only thing that's really different is in, uh, the name of this one is the consultation. Um, this is where all your consultation documents will go. We do not need the consultation documents right away, but we definitely need them once it goes under contract. So we expect you to submit your contract documents to us, again, within 48 hours of it going under contract, especially when you're representing the buyer, because most likely we have the earnest money or you're turning in the earnest money. So you will need that us to review that before we get that deposited. So as far as the consultation goes, um, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll need the RECAD, uh, the buyer's agency agreement, the general info, buyer's acknowledgement, uh, the affiliated capital title. There is a new form that you haven't seen yet, and that is the affiliated business agreement for Keller Mortgage. Uh, again, we are affiliated with them. So when um, you're working with a buyer that is not cash, 
Um, it's just good practice to get them to understand that if they use Keller Mortgage, uh, they we are affiliated with that company. And then if you are a transaction broker, uh, that form would go here, but remember you will also need the RECAD for the transaction broker. In the contract form, it's about the same, sales contract, inspection addendum, uh, copy of the earnest money. Uh, this is obviously not required with the consultation because you don't know the house price yet, but you'll need to get that estimated closing. The counter offer addendum, um, as you scroll down, you can see other things that you might need to upload the referral, W9. If you're working with, uh, if you end up purchasing uh, another listing that's with Keller Williams, you would need a dual agency agreement, um, lead paint, lead paint disclosure, uh, stuff like that. And again, if this falls through for whatever reason and you're working with the buyer still, you can add new versions and add other documents as you go if you need to. Finally, when it closes, meaning the exact same thing as listing uh, closing disclosure, final walkthrough, and a copy of the tech. And then we upload everything right here. Now, I will say this. If you are working with the seller and you also will be representing the buyer who ends up purchasing that house, you will need two separate opportunities. Right now, there is no way to keep track of um, or putting a dual agency into one folder. And that is really because of the sales pipeline. There's not a dual. So you would need to create two opportunities for that. So just keep that in mind. We have several agents that choose not to. Again, if you were with my last class, I think on last Thursday, it's up to you how you want to use this pipeline. However, it is made for you to separate the opportunities and not use just one, but it's up to you. It just confuses me a little bit, but that's okay. I love you guys. Anyway, um, all right. So what questions do we have, if any? And we'll wrap this thing up. Any questions at all about any of the documents or compliance, the commissions tab, anything? All right. Well, that was quick and easy since you guys don't have any questions. Um, I have recorded this, so I will put this up on the YouTube and post it on Facebook. That way, when you are um, getting ready to submit things to the office, you can go back and uh, look if you're having any trouble. So, all right, guys, let me know if y'all have any questions at all, and we will see you guys later. Thank y'all so much. I'm going to stop recording.